Hello everyone and welcome back to Paul.com Street Weekly episode 300. We're still going strong, running a little uh, long here on time, but that's okay. We've got a couple of tech segments to catch up on. Carlos Perez is finally here with us. Welcome, Carlos. Hey, Paul. Glad to be here. Hola. Carlos coming to us from sunny Puerto Rico. As usual, we'll be talking to us today about using Windows remote management for fun and profit. Take it away, Carlos. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, recently uh, I've been going to several meetings here in the island of security professionals. And one of the things that kind of keep coming up always is security professionals that manage Windows environments and keep telling me, oh, I want to install open SSH on Windows. I'm going like, why do you want to install open SSH on Windows? Uh, yeah, uh, RDP sometimes is a bit too uh, big on the network. It is a bit heavy. And we just want that command shell where we can work in. And I'm surprised that a lot of people that manage Windows environments do not know about Windows Remote Management or Win- WinRAM. Uh, WinRAM is something that Microsoft added into Windows 2003 uh, as a feature that gets installed. Uh, later on, it added it, it came already pre-installed in Windows 2008. It comes it also with Windows 2008 RT, and it even comes enabled in Windows 2012. Uh, and WinRAM is just a system. Uh, for remote management, there's uh, an implementation of what is called the WS Management Protocol, which is an open standard. Uh, it is based on SOAP messages. It is more firewall friendly than using, let's say, uh, WMI for administering your environment, since it is not RPC based. It is more HTTP based uh, type of traffic. Uh, so you can actually go through firewalls, you can tunnel it, and you can do several stuff with the protocol itself since it is SOAP-based. Um, WinRAM actually leverages the HTTP.sys uh, live subsystem that comes in Windows. Uh, once it is enabled, if you look at your environment, you probably will see it if you have Windows uh, 8 or any Windows 2012 VM turning around that you're testing that came out this month. You'll probably see port 5985 for the HTTP listener for it. Uh, and we can even configure it to use HTTPS. Uh, now I know that a lot of people are hearing HTTP and they're going like, what? Enable by default HTTP? That has to be very bad. Uh, well, it is not if you're in a domain environment. The way that Windows Remote Management actually works in a domain environment is that by default it uses Kerberos. And it uses, uh, actually what you're doing is you're delegating your Kerberos ticket over to the other uh, machine that you're connecting to. It will actually verify that that the machine that you're connecting to is in the domain and everything is actually encrypted. Uh, The payload, uh, the authentication, there's no way for anybody to kind of man in the middle right now. Uh, Windows Remote Management Session, if you're in the domain, if you decide to configure it as I'm going to show you here, uh, in the case you're a pen tester or you're working in a work group environment, uh, it will actually use until on version 2. Uh, and since you're actually doing an HTTP post, uh, the username is going to be going out in the clear, and then you're going to be seeing the until on version 2 challenge and response going through the uh, wire. So if anybody just wants to be malicious, they can actually do <laughs> replay uh, attack on you if they're able to kind of get in the middle. So let's say that you're able to get into a machine or you want to administer a machine remotely that is running Windows 2008, Windows 2008 R2, or any of the other versions that actually have uh, WinRAM installed. And it, the way to actually enable it is quite simple. On the command line, you only need to run WinRAM space quick config and minus Q, so you won't get the prompt uh, and ask if you actually want to enable it or not. What this command will actually do is will um, set the WinRAM service to automatically start in the case of Windows 2008 and 2008 R2 or Windows 2003. It will create an HTTP listener uh, on all of the interfaces that are not uh, with a public profile. If you're running Windows 2008, Windows 7, you probably have noticed that your interfaces can be either in a domain, a work, or a public uh, profile, you can set those profiles and it will actually disable or enable services depending on how you actually configure that interface. 
This will only enable it on those are not in the public profile. Uh, and it will make even the appropriate changes to the Windows firewall so you're able to kind of connect to the machine. Uh, in the case that you're a pen tester or that you're actually an administrator and you want to connect then to that, that box for your random command in, uh, the only thing you get to do is, uh, on your client side is go to your command line and set and type WinRM, uh, then the command set, and then you're going to put a path in for the conversion, which is WinRM backslash config backslash uh, client. And backslash? Then, oh. Uh, sorry, for forward slash. And then you're going to, uh, going to put an R percent, um, bracket, uh, I forgot the, which one's the, the squiggly line bracket, uh, curly brace, curly brace. Uh, then you're going to put in the when trusted host equal, and you can actually give it an asterisk or the name of the machine you want to connect to. If you put an asterisk in, it will actually trust any host that you're connecting to. This is not recommended, but if you're actually in the work group, this is the only way you can actually use it. In a domain, it is not recommended. Uh, you close with uh, curly brackets. Once you hit enter, uh, your client will trust any machine it will connect to. It will not verify if that machine says who it says it is, uh, either by checking the domain controller or checking if, if, if it is true through uh, HTTPS, if the certificates are valid. So I did it in my environment, and now you know, to connect and get a shell on the box, uh, the only thing I got to do is I got to type WinRS, which is the command for uh, remote shell, uh, minus R, and I give it the URI, the URI would be, in this case, HTTP, colon, backslash, back, um, uh, 192.168.1.166, Put a colon and then the, uh, the port number, in this case 59885, which is the default port, uh, minus U colon administrator, because I'm going to be connecting as an administrator, and then the command I want to run. I can either type, uh, in this case I'm typing cmd.xt, but I can give it any command I want, uh, NS, NetSH, WMIC, anything that I want run, and then brought back to me. It will not break the session, it will not break the shell if I'm using NetSH or WMIC like a regular netcat or ncat shell would. Um, and once I hit enter, we're asking for my password. I enter my password, and all of a sudden I have to pump, a remote pump on the remote box, and everything's encrypted. Uh, if I want to do this type of connection through a proxy, and my machine has a proxy computer, it will go through the proxy, and the connection will remain completely encrypted uh, point to point. Uh, if I want to be a bit more flexible, and have kind of a proper, better shell than uh, cmd.x, I can actually use PowerShell. Once I have enabled this, and I have made the configuration of the trusted host, I can, in PowerShell, I can use the command enter uh, dash ps session. I give it the computer, uh, the computer name parameter, give it the IP number, then I can give it the credential parameter and the user name that I want to connect to. Once I do that, it will actually prompt me for the password for that user. I enter the password for the user, and it will give me a PowerShell uh, session on the remote box where I can enter all of my PowerShell commands. PowerShell, I can run PowerShell scripts, load modules, load new commands, and do whatever I want on the remote box. Uh, now, let's say I'm an attacker. I have uh, the username and password that I need, which I know is administrator, a local administrator, or domain admin on a target box, and I want to enable this. One of the things you can actually do is you can use WMI to actually run the command remotely, create a new process. In this case, uh, you can use PSXec. In this case, I'm using um, PowerShell. I'm using the get WMI object. I'm doing it free, so I can kind of put into a variable the Win32 uh, class uh, into that variable, and I'm connecting to the my remote computer, giving it the credentials for administrator, and once I am able to kind of connect and get that class, I just do a, a create process for cmd.xt backslash c for a command, and then I type win the and click and click minus q. I am able to kind of connect to that box and enable uh, Windows Remote Management on my remote box. Uh, I added into the wiki instructions on how to do the group policy configuration for WinRM. 
Uh, I do find it quite useful in the lab at work and also in my lab at home. And then uh, some customers where I do remote administration on uh, privately, uh, one of the things we did is that we enable Windows Remote Management to win around. And one of the things uh, that I can do via PowerShell is that there's a command called invoke command that lets me run commands against a set of computers, all of them remotely at the same time, or at least uh, uh, to the setting that I have uh, set the throttle on. On the command, typically 32 machines, uh, in chunks of 32 machines, I can run commands on all of them simultaneously and then um, go from there. Uh, I include instructions on how to set it up, how to kind of control the different sessions, control authentication, control, make sure that uh, people do not start messing with the settings and set, uh, set it so traffic goes encrypted, that they use basic authentication or anything like that that they're not supposed to and how to kind of set up the firewalls and everything for it. So I'm kind of giving you how what a malicious user uh, would set it up, and also giving you a way on how to control that and kind of keep it keep, keep the lid down so that users do not abuse it. Awesome. <clears throat> uh, does that conclude your technical segment, Carlos? Short and simple. What's short, that? Short oh. and simple. Short and simple. Very cool. Carlos, thank you very much. With that, we'll take a short break. Come back. And uh, Larry and Darren, will, uh, Larry will give the final technical segment on hacking your car. <laughs> 